This is fucking huge, okay? I can't stress this enough. Daddy, I want your delicious cummies. Hello, it's your boy Hypo, your friendly neighborhood neckbeard. Here we're going to go over the patch notes for patch 3.0.1. Very big patch coming up. Uh, please excuse my voice as I just woke up. I look a little disheveled as well. Um, because I am. I'm incredibly tired. <laughs> this is a huge patch, so you're going to want to pay attention. There's little sections if you want to skip through, let me know. Other than that, we're just going to jump right into it. Now, right off the bat, looking at the dislike offline time, it looks like we're going to be down from about, if you're PST, at least that's where I am, uh, it's going to be about 12 p.m. to about 2 p.m. That's when they're taking the servers down. Uh, of course, reset is at 5 for us normally. So do the math if you want to convert that for your time zone. If you're a level 5 or up, we're getting some free Nexus Crystals with an update. Not bad, as expected. We kind of get rewarded as mobile players by just merely going through an update. Going to the major thing here is you can already see Ollie, aka Osiris, is coming out. A lot of his promo materials out there. If you haven't seen it on the official Dislight channel, I recommend you check that out as he looks really sick. Five star flow attuned Esper. So keep in mind your flow materials are being taken. That being said, looking at his kit, he is also incredibly sick. Going step by step here, looking at his hook strike. Deals damage, inflicts silence. Silence being that you cannot cast special ability, but you can still choose your target for your basic. Um, big thing here, Ollie's passive ability, humongous move here. Uh, when an allied esper takes a fatal hit, Ollie's passive ability, Salvific Judgments, grants Salvific Judgments to prevent them from dying, as well as invincibility and recovery, and inflicts Law of Duat on the attacker. Law of Duat, what is that? You're wondering, that is Ollie's third ability, Law of Duat. Uh, deals damage to an enemy with additional damage based on the time while granting the caster invincibility max HP of course that's going to help a ton on working on these bosses and whittling down their big HP bars hence the reason why characters like Chalmers who are usually scoffed at uh, have so much power built into them just based on max HP shred if someone kills one of Ollie's allies he will both attack and deal damage to them as well as afflict defense down and taunt to them pretty absurd so if things are dying Ollie is popping off. Incredibly powerful from the looks of his abilities. He has a number of revive mechanics as well. Pretty absurd. Now let's go ahead and look at Neath. Neath? Again, if you can't tell, I'm going to murder these names. But Neath is a four-star shimmer attuned Esper. That means this is in the same pool as our White Tiger Mommy. So if you're trying to get White Tiger Mommy, now is the time to get before any other time. Because this pick will dilute the pool. It'll make it a little harder to get her. So if you're really, really pushing for her... Good luck. You're going to need it because uh, the chances of that are incredibly low. But know that now is the time to get her. That being said, after I just promoted you spinning your records, I recommend you hold them because Laura kicks ass. She is a support expert. She grants a shield to all allies and counterattacks the attacker when her shield is dispelled or destroyed. We're going to go ahead and skip ahead to her second ability. Now, after each allied expert takes a turn, Laura's passive ability, Shield Guardian, grants the ally shield which absorbs damage based on neath's max hp and if you ascend her then you will see that when an allied shield is destroyed or dispelled by an enemy neath has a chance to counterattack that enemy similar ask to bardon in a way but incredibly powerful in comparison so having read that now we can understand the rest of her abilities we'll go ahead and jump to her basic real quick though laura's first ability shield attack deals damage to an enemy based on her attack and max hp with a chance of inflicting silence a little bit of tank amping on the damage we got some reason to build some attack on her as well um but silence is the key factor so whenever one of those shields get popped from her allies she will have a chance to inflict silence to the person who broke that hence shitting on their ability to deal damage pretty incredible ability to manipulate and kind of neuter the enemy team from Laura already. Laura does not need to go very fast to do this. She can be a brick wall that hits like a truck. Incredibly powerful presence in a team just by merely existing. That being said, her third ability is something that she'll be doing on turn one. Uh, Iron Wall grants shield and crit resist to all allied espers. If the target already has a shield, increases the shield strength. So essentially, if you have units that are going faster than her and they already have shield, the shield will just be bigger. I'm assuming that Iron Wall is a stronger shield than her passive, but we'll have to see how big of a shield that is. If that shield is, if her passive shield is pretty pathetic and small, it will be a bit rough. I am also worried about characters like Chloe constantly stealing tons of shields from everyone. 
Flora is an incredibly powerful character. We'll go ahead and scroll down now to Nicole, otherwise known as Nefiti, Nefit, Nefit, Nefitis, Nefit. This is gonna be a running thing. Okay, I'm just letting you know right now. Now, Nicole is an incredibly powerful four-star shimmer attuned Esper. Again, diluting the pool for Tiger Mommy if you wanna get her. Support Esper who can revive and take damage for allies while granting them defense up, invincibility again, and other buffs. First ability, Spiral Strike, deals damage to an enemy based on their max HP with a chance of inflicting Seer. Seer being the kind of baby defense down, it's about a 25% damage amp. And then Nicole's second ability, Dead Man's Protection, grants Soul, sh grants soul Guard, now allied Esper. Ascension, Soul Guard part of the damage taken by the carrier will be redistributed to the caster. Essentially, if they're taking damage from a source, the caster will take the damage in turn with them, kind of sharing the load a little bit revives immediately and restores a certain amount of hp based on their max hp this buff expires on the caster's death now before we talk more i want to talk about the ascension when soul guard revives an allied esper nicole immediately grants them standoff and recovery standoff being that they cannot die and recovery of course on their turn they will they will regenerate I'm curious about the interaction of whenever a carrier dies them being revived do they still have the soul guard buff on them does that mean that Nicole is going to take damage from them still after, even though they have the standoff buff? Her third ability, Spinning Wrap, deals damage to all enemies based on their max HP, granting defense up and invincibility to all allied espers and soul guard to the ally with the lowest HP. Yeah, that is very... She's very no die is kind of the idea it's, it's almost like Catherine, except more even more survivability focused um i'm a bit torn on nicole if you can't tell she's gonna be somewhere in between incredibly irrelevant or incredibly powerful and uh, i i'm kind of up in the air about her obviously i think the invincibility and everything will be incredibly powerful but is that two turn is that one turn you have fast allies that's not gonna matter you know that that invincibility will fall off very quickly i can definitely see here being a great addition to a point war defense or in the upcoming war hollow battles defense i can absolutely see her being incredibly powerful but i'm getting ahead of myself a little bit so moving on to the fourth addition to the roster we have meredith meredith uh actually being a four star wind attuned esper so more wind i know we already have a ton of winds to work with but we got another one. Now, of course, Meredith in this example actually can only be acquired through an event that's going to be going on that I'll explain later. But um, she possesses... So we'll go ahead and take a look. First ability, Sonic Venom. Attacks an enemy with a chance of inflicting poison. <clears throat> poison obviously being a lot stronger against high HP targets. So think bossing at this point. Uh, Meredith's second ability, Sonic Shield, restores a certain amount of HP and grants defense up and crit resist to an allied esper so general usefulness with the defense up but also crit resist we'll admit that it's a little underwhelming but i will say that anytime i see crit resist i can't help but feel it's incredibly focused towards pvp um just me thinking but uh but meredith's third ability hand of skilla skyla skila uh reduces the max hp of an enemy by a certain percentage of hp to all allied espers equal to a portion of damage dealt back to bossing here i'm thinking that this is going to chunk bosses pretty decently and uh, a certain portion of damage dealt, I imagine a boss is going to be restoring quite a bit of HP to everyone on your team. This might be even just be a full heal when everyone's 20%. This could be insane. That being said, uh, the Ascension ability, if, this, if an allied Esper's HP is above a certain ratio, grants speed up. So nice little addition to this. If you hit that level that you're looking at, that, that good amount of HP burn to burn through, it will be incredibly powerful. That being said... I'm a little worried about Meredith on auto. I feel like uh, with the AI system, she will target not the highest max HP target, but she'll int instead target the lowest HP target that is currently available. So I will say that Meredith is probably going to be a manual play only, but we'll see if that, we'll see how that works out overall. Now, again, she can only be required through the event, which we will talk about very soon. But that is all the four new characters coming out. Again, looking at all the characters, we have one flow, two shimmers, and a wind. Now, of course, these two in particular are diluting the uh, tiger mommy pool, so it's a bit of a bummer, uh, at least for me. Between all four of them, I'm going to be honest, I, th I think Osiris is going to be incredibly powerful. I think Laura is going to be uh, very reliable and consistently powerful. Um... Or your team especially if your team is moving fast especially if your team is moving fast and popping off 
Um, I'm a little unimpressed with Nicole, but I could just be completely wrong. Keep that in mind. We don't know the CDs of these abilities. Um, and I will say that spinning wrap could be incredibly powerful depending on how long these buffs last. And Meredith, I'm kind of in a weird place where I don't know what she's good at. I, I, <laughs> cause we don't have the numbers, the CDs. We don't have exactly the details of her kit that I think are very necessary to figure out what she's going to be good at. But that being said, the max HP shred kind of makes me think bossing is going to be her thing. All in all, a pretty exciting patch, especially with the club content. But overall, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff helps me out, helps me in the algorithm and uh, stick around as well as I release more content. I apologize as this was kind of messy as this is my first time doing this kind of thing, but me and my homies, we all love this site and I'm going to be playing it well into the future. So if you want to hit up the Discord, follow me on TikTok, YouTube, most importantly, Twitch, where I stream Saturday to Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central for the patch whenever it comes out. So again, thank you for watching, homies. Peace. On the scene. I used to have the play deuce and the deuce deuce in my bubble goose. Now I got the Mac in my neck, sack lounge and black, smoking sacks up and axe and sidekicks with my sidekicks, rock and fly kicks. Honey's wanna chat, but all we wanna know is where the party at. And can I bring my gat? If not, I hope I don't get shot. Better throw my vest on my chest, cause niggas is a mess. It don't take nothing but front for me to start something. Bugging and bucking at niggas like I was duck hunting. Coming out.